All right, class. Um, wish you were here, but since you were not, you're not able to get in here. What I'm going to do is the next best thing is I'll show you guys how to do it properly. Uh, the lap that we're doing today is the uh, it's called the molar mass of a volatile liquid. Okay, that's the lap that we're doing. And what happened is that the data sheet is on page uh, 83. Okay, we'll focus in on this thing in just a bit. Now basically what we're trying to do is uh, utilize the ideal gas law to determine the molar mass of a vapor, okay, that's trapped inside a vessel. And the equation, the primary equation is this guy right here. That's a, there's two versions from the uh, ideal gas law. One is a PV equal MRT. However, the thing is that uh, you, you wanted to find the gram, uh, the gram pole wave molar mass, you want to do it this way. So there's Lord, this is the this is the ideal gas law, and then you rearrange for the molecular weight, and therefore it's like this. Okay, so the density is equal to mass divided by volume, and we'll measure this one, this one, this one, and that one, and therefore what we'll do is to go and calculate the molar mass of that vapor. Okay, so that's the go. Now the next thing is that what I want to show you guys is the equipment that's needed for the experiment. Okay, so in that case, what you got over here is that you should have ready a beaker of tap water for boiling, a beaker of distilled water for backfilling a flask, you need a thermometer, you need a pycnometer that has a lid that has a hole on it, okay? That's for the vapor to pass, and also you want a rings for weighing. And then you want a, uh, a flask like this, it's uh, probably a 600, for holding everything in. And a hot plate, hey you guys, watch out for the hot plate, okay? Never touch this place. Because what happens is you can get a second degree burn that way. And the thing is when we go and uh, turn on the hot plate, it's the left now, okay? The other thing that, and then there's a setup, okay? There's a ring sand, there's a clamp. Now, the other thing is that we have a, this is known as a barometer. Hey, FK's got treasure. This is a museum quality piece, okay? And then what we need is that we need a flat balance for weighing heavy stuff, and then an analytical balance for weighing the really delicate stuff, okay? And of course, Here's a rack of sample. I'm just going to pick one of these, okay? And then at the end of the lab, make sure that all of your waste goes into this one, organic waste. Never dump anything down the sink, okay? Anyway, so uh, let's hold it for now. And what happened is that on the next clip, I'm going to show you guys how to perform the experiment. Okay. All right, class, here's the first step. What we're going to do is going to pick a sample. And let's see, let's pick one that's kind of full. Um, okay, whatever the number is, write it down. Okay, now the next thing you want to do, let's park it over here. Next thing you want to do is go and weigh the empty flask. So what you need to do is that here's the anechoic balance. Make sure that all the doors are closed. Push the middle button to zero it, okay? And then what you want to do is that open up one of the windows. Actually, what I'm going to do is just, I'll put it in the sideways. Go like this and pick this guy up, the ring first, and then park the uh, flask in there, shut the door, and then what you then do is to go and read the mass that's on the screen. Okay, so just make sure you write that down. Okay, after that, what you then do is to take that guy off, take both off. Now, don't do anything else with the ring, okay? Just park it right there. Now the next thing you want to do is to go and open up the uh, lid and pour some of this liquid in. Now think it, it doesn't matter how much, okay? Because what happens, what's critical is what's trapped in here. The excess will come out anyway. So in that case, go pour something like that, okay? That's pretty good right there. And then what you want to do is make sure you want to uh, close the lid for the sample, put it down, put the cap on, make sure that ground joint go with ground joint. Because if you don't, it might fall off. So therefore, ground, ground joint to ground joint like that. And what you want to do is that go clamp it onto this particular setup. See, so I'm right-handed the wing nuts over here on this side. Now what you then do is this. Lower the entire setup down. Okay, get as low as you can. And then what you then do is this. Stick the thermometer in there on the outside into the beaker. Now, what you want to do is that uh, you're going to pour the tap water into the beaker, okay? So it goes to the neck. Don't go any further than that. 
don't waste the still water in this one. So it goes on the outside. So there we go. All right, cover the neck. Now what you then do is this. Now make sure that you do not plug in the wire until you're ready. In this particular case, what you then do is to go and plug it in. Okay, and now we're ready to heat up the heat up the uh, liquid. Okay, so it's the left knob. So crank it all the way up. Okay. Now it's going to take about say 10 to 15 minutes. I'm going to do a lap, so I'm going to shut the. Uh, I'm going to ask the uh, to pause the camera just a bit. Now, hey guys, whatever you guys do, please do not put your nose right there. You don't want to be snorting this. There'll be a plume of stuff coming out like that. So therefore, stay away from this thing. And what you want to do is that you want to heat this thing up and. If you zoom in, right, what you'll find is that there's a liquid like that on the top right there inside the flash. There's a level. What you want to see is you want to see that disappear and also the gurgling stops. Okay? And then that's when you read the temperature. Okay. All right, class, this is a, a zoom in on the liquid level. So what happens is if you see right there, Right there, there's a liquid level right there. You want the inner level to disappear, okay? So once it disappears and then there is no more bubbling up here, that's when you go read the thermometer, okay? And then afterward, what you then do is you'll lift this guy up, okay? Okay. Can you? All right, class. Like I said, this is a time relapse video because I didn't want you, know, you guys to go and just watch it uh, starting to boil. Now this is about say 15 to 18 minutes after we fit or started. Now what I want you guys to notice is that the water is boiling and then if you zoom in a bit, what happens is you'll notice that at the top of the cap, there's some gurgling, okay? There's a little movement inside the cap. And if you look on top, there's some liquid right there sputtering. So therefore that's what I'm telling you, do not put your nose right there. There's actually an invisible stream of stuff coming out, okay? So like I said, what we're gonna do is that we'll keep it uh, heating until that liquid level disappears, okay? Now, meanwhile, while, now once the water starts boiling, you might as well read the temperature. In this particular case, it's um, 99 degrees Celsius, okay? Because up here, the elevation is a little higher, so for, it boils a little bit lower. So take down the temperature. Next thing, we're gonna take the barometer reading. That's from this guy, and usually I would read that for you, and today it is um, 741.5 torr, okay? And I would usually put that on the board. Now, what we do is this. Now, now that we got the temperature, as well as the barometer reading, we'll let it finish, meaning let the liquid all disappear, okay? Now, as soon as the liquid disappear, you wanna lift this guy up. So, we're gonna pause the video, and when we get ready, we'll come back on. All right, class, wake up, wake up. Okay, look like it's done. So what happens, the level's down. Now, what would you assess? You must bring the glass up and let it cool down for about a minute or so, okay? Now, meanwhile, what you wanna do is I go to the sink with a tub, forgot to mention tub. What you do is I go and fill it about half full with tap water, okay? So basically what you wanna do is that you want to condense the vapor that's inside. All right, so this is what you do. Okay. Okay. Now what you want to do is this. Don't take it off the handle. What you want to do is this. Lift this, use the clamp as a handle, and what you do is swirl it inside. And what happens is that it'll sweat. Okay? It'll sweat. So the thing is that you'll see a little bit of liquid in there. Okay? That's normal, because what happened is that the vapor that was evaporated, what happened is now when you cool it back down, it condenses back down, okay? So once that's uh, condensed back down, what you then do is to go wipe that thing dry, make sure you wipe it dry, okay? Then what you wanna do is to go and loosen this, of course, uh, now shut off the uh, boiler, okay? You don't need that anymore. Now what you wanna do is to take that Take it off, and then what you want to do is take the ring as well as your flask with the little condensed drop of liquid in there. You want to reweigh it again, okay? So in that case, make sure, zero the balance, 
because everybody in class does a little thing, something strange. In that case, what you want to do is I put the flask in there and read the number. Okay, there, that's your mask of the flask, stopper, uh, ring, and the condensed vapor, okay? So now that you've got that number down, all right, next thing, take it out, and what you want to do is this, you know, there's like condensed vapor, this is the time to go to the organic, this one is usually inside the hood, and take that off and pour all that liquid into the uh, organic waste as best you can, okay? So, next thing you want to do is this. Now, you got the mass of vapor. Next thing is you need to con uh, measure the volume of the liquid, okay? So what you do is this. Take this, go to the sink with the cap. Go to the sink, and what you want to do is that fill up that flask full of distilled water. And try not to generate a lot of bubble. Okay, you want to fill it to the brim. You want to fill it to the brim, such that it's stuck, so you get a little bit of curvy liquid right there. What I'm going to do is this. Uh, I'm going to tap it a little bit to get all the bubble out of there. Okay, notice that when I do that, it squirts, yeah? Whoa, yeah, good. Now here's the thing though, I got a lot of bubble in there. I need to go, what, this is how you do this. Hold the flask and slap your hand. Not the flask, okay? And it'll get rid of all the air bubble. Okay, see, they're gone. Now what you then do is I lift it back up, fill it to the brim again. See, there's a round surface. And then what you then do is put it in and let it squirt, okay? So basically you have backfilled every volume, every bit of volume or that flask with the water. And the, basically what you're doing is you're using the water, the mass of the water, you're gonna weigh soon. You're gonna use the mass of the water and the density of the water to determine the volume of the water in there. And the volume of the water is equal to the volume of the flask, which is also the volume of the vapor, okay? So now that you finish wiping it dry, okay. This is when you, now here's the thing. Once you do this, please do not go to an anical balance. You'll kill the anical balance. So what you do is that, here's a flat balance right there. And then what you want to do is that, zero it, okay? Zero the balance. That name's a younger number. And then what you do is put that on, put it on, and weigh it, yeah? So it would be a three digit number. In this case, it says a 341 gram. But the thing is that don't put any point whatever in it. You only got the first three numbers. You have nothing below the decimal, okay? Because this balance is not capable of that. So write that down in your lab manual. And then the last step for the lab. Hooray! Is so you're going to take that off. Uh, get the thermometer. And stick it in there. And wait about, say, two or three minutes. And then read the temperature. Okay, and it'll be the last thing that you have to do. Okay, so therefore what you then do is you got the five number from the lab, and then number six, the density of the, you look at it on the table right there. See, knowing the temperature, you'll get the density. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is that, I'm gonna read it now. You should wait a couple more minutes, but since this is a clip, uh, it says uh, 22, yeah, 22 degrees. So in that case, what happened is this. Ah, 22 degrees, the density is 0.9977 for four, but whatever. What happened, look at your temperature and then get your density. So once you have gotten these six, num uh, these six numbers, hey, we're done. Yippee-yay, yay, yo, yo. Okay, see you later. Son.